Over the last five years, I've made over 2,000 videos on my favorite video game of all time, Football Manager. In fact, for the last three years, making Football Manager videos has been the vast majority of my income. In this video, we're going to be going behind the scenes and having a look at exactly how I do that and going through step by step what my process is for making a Football Manager or really any gaming video. Hello and welcome to Content Academy. My name's Kevin Chapman. For the last three years, I've been a full-time content creator here on YouTube. And that's what this channel is about, helping you to get to the point where you can also build a successful YouTube channel. If that sounds like the kind of thing that you're interested in, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on so you don't miss out on any future videos. And as mentioned in the intro today, we're going to be going behind the scenes and having a look at exactly how I make my gaming videos, specifically gaming videos for my Football Manager channel, where I've made thousands of videos. I was making daily Football Manager videos when I was still working a full-time job as a teacher. And since I've been a full-time content creator for the last three years, for the majority of the year, I'm creating two videos a day on this game, as well as streaming it four nights a week over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Lelujo. Link is down in the description. I stream Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Sundays. If you want to come over there and see what it's like live and in person, or even just ask any questions about this video or anything else you want to chat about, we have a lot of fun over there on Twitch. But let's get into showing you how a Football Manager video comes to life. Now, as mentioned, I've been doing this a long time and I've gone through many different workflows and some have been some have been good some have been not so good I think the workflow I've got currently is the most efficient one that I've ever had so I'll take you through this one this isn't necessarily what I would recommend if you're first starting out because for a start I'm now running a two camera setup so I've got this camera and this camera that I use for both my videos and my streams and it's completely unnecessary complete overkill but for me, it just gives me a little bit more flexibility to, to be able to do slightly more creative things in the edit. But you can, you can kind of do exactly the same thing just with one camera, just with a webcam setup, doing the same job. So like I mentioned, I've used many different things over the years, even going back to my early days when I first started out and I was recording everything on a 2010 MacBook Air using QuickTime and PowerPoint to do the transitions. You can tell I'm self-taught because that is just a ridiculous, a ridiculous way to try and put together gaming YouTube videos. But um, these days I'm using software that is actually completely free for you to go and get. I use OBS Studio. You can uh, There's a download link in the description below to get OBS. If you've ever had any kind of interest in gaming content or live streaming, you're probably already well aware that OBS exists. But I do everything now within OBS and I've actually streamlined my process. So now I just have to click one button to go live. There's no turning on all the different cameras and um, there's no recording the game in one software, the camera in a different software, and I still maintain the full flexibility to have my cameras fully editable, resizable. I can choose the camera in post when I'm editing, um, and it's it's the most flexible and efficient way I've ever done things. So let's let's show you how I do it. So to start things off, this is this is my current setup. So I mentioned I have the uh, the two cameras, so you can see camera. This is the camera I'm looking into now. This is my Canon. M50, um, and this is my Canon 80D. This one has a quite a tight angle lens that basically focuses on my face, whereas this one is a little bit wider and gives you that office shot that I like to use in my intros or for these videos. They're both attached to the computer, which is over there behind us uh, via Elgato capture cards. I've got my microphone uh, just here, which is a Rode Procaster, which goes via that yellow cable, which I deliberately made it yellow so that I could find it. I picked a yellow cable deliberately, and um, which goes all the way through this little audio booster thing at the back and into this audio interface that then goes into my PC via USB. I'm gonna be doing a full setup tour in a couple of weeks so we can go into that stuff in a little, in a little more detail. I need to tidy the office a little bit before I do that properly. And then I've got my two monitors here. They're both LG ultra wide monitors. So that one has the game on usually. And you can see no point getting ultra wide when you're making 1080p gaming videos because I have to have the silly black bars on the side or else it looks all stretched and silly in the video. And over here I have OBS running and OBS looks odd. 
Let's get that over here and have a proper look at what's going on in OBS. So this is my OBS screen. You can tell I've added, I've added a fourth thing to capture on it, which is OBS itself. So you can see uh, what we've got going on within the OBS software. But, but I've basically got it set up to be a 4K uh, 4K canvas to work with. I don't even think that's the right word in OBS. I'm not the most technical man. As I mean, I already said, I <laughs> I used QuickTime and PowerPoint for about six months when I first started, but this is set up as a 4K uh, screen to play with. So each one of these four corners is a 1080p, so full HD image. And then I have my four different sources, or for a normal video, there'll only be three, or that'll sometimes be a web browser or whatever I need in there as my, as my fourth input will go in there. But I have my game up in the top corner, and then I have the two cameras here, and then I just hit record, and it records the whole thing, all four views as one big 4K file. So you need a you need a decent computer to be able to edit this afterwards, even though we're not going to be outputting 4K footage, because what we do when we take this into the editor is just chop this up into four and treat them as four different sources, which I'll show you when we get to edit this video that I'm creating now. Uh, but they're all recorded as one big media source, and it means I only have to hit record once. The audio is automatically synced with all of the cameras and with the game. So there's no syncing up audio and video together afterwards in the edit, which saves a lot of time. So I used to record my cameras separately onto an SD card, import it in, and then had to do all the clap sync stuff to sync it all together. And it was, it was a pain. Um, but this way, I had to do that once when I was setting it all up to set up uh, delays and things on the different pieces of pieces of tech so you can see i've got a slight delay on my microphone to make it sync up with the cameras and one of the cameras has also got a delay on it as well because of the capture card so i've had to spend a little bit of time getting it all nicely set up but now that it is i literally just have to go in hit record start doing the video when i'm done hit stop record input all the footage into premiere pro and and then we're away and editing so i'm now going to go and record this video and then i'll be back afterwards to show you how i'm editing it okay so video's recorded um the next thing i do is get stuck into the files and the first thing i do with the files is delete all of the mkv versions i have my um my obs set up to automatically um convert them to mp4 so they record in MK mkv because it's more stable and if the if the recording stops for whatever reason you don't lose what you've already recorded um, but then it automatically converts to mp4 as the file finishes because mp4 is what i need for premiere pro so the first thing i do is i come in and i delete all the mkvs because i don't need them anymore and they're just clogging up my hard drive um oh hold on it can't delete the one that we're currently recording ha ah, so yeah that's the one we're still recording now um good job it didn't delete it. Um, and then I just start renaming all of the files. So some of these are for this video, but I usually know one of my videos will start with a four or five second clip because that's when I do the that's when I do the bit at the start where I thank the channel members. So that's gonna be um, Apollon 29 part one. And then I'll just go through and name all the clips so they're easier to identify once we get into Premiere Pro. So they're the first, they're the four parts of the Apollon episode that I've just done and I've recorded a, a Born episode as well, so part 130 of Born, 131, sorry, which again is a four-part thing, which is usually, unless I make a mistake in a video or there's a cup draw or a third game, normally I'll have the channel member thanking thing will be clip one, clip two will be the intro, then the intro music rolls, then we have match one, match two. Um, so we've got those four clips, which we can then import into Premiere Pro. So we have a new uh, project file set up in Premiere Pro, and I'll just do both of these videos in the same project file normally. So the first thing is to get all of my clips that I've just recorded into Premiere Pro, um, and then go and find all of my other standard clips that I always use as well. So this is all the standard stuff for the Bourne series, and then for the Greek Odyssey, we have the same. And then the other thing that we have to drag in is channel member stuff which this folder is the most unorganized mess in the world and there is no reason for me to keep all of the old ones of these but i just kind of got into the habit of keeping them all and haven't got out of that habit yet and need to because the folder is an absolute mess and just seeing it now and having to justify its existence 
it is ridiculous and it shouldn't exist in its current form but they're the two most recent ones of those so that is everything we need to put together two football manager videos we're just going to focus on the one the first one um, so the first thing we do is we grab the first clip and we start a new sequence from that clip. Obviously, if you don't use Premiere Pro, this stuff's going to be a little bit different in the editing software that you use. And we will have a discussion at some point about what editing software might be might be best, what other options there are. But I've used Premiere Pro for years and just I don't see any reason why I'd stop using it at this point. And so we're just going to trim that to the right kind of size. I know that all of my video files need a five decibel audio boost. It's just a, a standard thing for my videos. Um, and then we're going to slap the, uh, the first channel member thing over the top of that. And we can see that, in fact, you, you'd see it easier if we grabbed before we put that on and um, you can see that at the moment we've got a 4k file that we're playing with so the first thing we're going to do is say right actually our sequence is only a 1080p sequence and then we've got all of these different files which we can then move around and use whichever one that we want now i have a load of presets set up for this so if i wanted my full full face i could click that one um, if i wanted the game to show i would click that one um, if i wanted it to be my little face cam i can make it the right size and crop it so that it fits in there and um, and these are all presets that I've set up over time, getting it used to looking exactly how I want to use it. And then when it looks exactly right, I then save it as a preset so I don't have to go in and change that every time. But um, for now, we need to stick this on there. Make sure it sounds okay. Normally, I'd have my headphones on for this, but I'll, I'll be doing the proper editing in a second. I'm just showing you roughly how it works for now. Um, and then we stick the second clip in. Um, and this one I know wants to be a full face. So we do the full face again. We're going to give it a little audio boost. And on this series, on all my intros, um, we always have the voice of Mrs. Weirmouth, um, the imaginary chairwoman of the football club um, who gets involved. And that's her voice clip. It's always the same voice clip. And I just chop that up and put that where I need it. She always needs uh, a 10 decibel reduction. She's a loud lady. And then we just will go through that and make sure that it all fits exactly how we want it to fit, edit out any bits that need to be edited out, slot in bits of Mrs. Weirmouth's conversation where we need it, and then move on. So I've got my little intro all set up and edited how I want it, and then it's time to put the intro uh, the intro stinger thing on, the little animation that I have set up for this series, which I always put three of these on. The reason for, I, for putting three on will become clear in a second. There probably is a more efficient way to do this, and that would be kind of a theme of how I, of watching me edit through my videos. There probably are lots more efficient ways to do a lot of the things that I do. But I am, I've never been taught how to do any of this. I've kind of just figured out how to get things working the way I want them as I go. And then if I discover an easier way, I'll fix it later. So it's always, it's always being improved and changed. But at the moment, the easiest way for me to get the transition from here to the next part, the way I want it to look, is to have three different levels of the exact same animation, only one of the audio clip, because then when I get into the bit where I need to have the game and my face cam on together, I have to set the screen up like this to make it all work. So there's one version of the clip. We put a second version of the clip on top. We then have a little overlay that we put over the face cam that needs to go in over the top of that. And then a third version of that file goes over the top of that. We just need to make the overlay fill the full length of the clip. And then we go through, first we get through the other two layers of audio. So highlight them, unlink them, delete them. We only need the audio on once. And again, the audio is going to need a five decibel boost. And then working from the top, um, we're just going to start using our presets. So top layer is my full screen face cam. If I want to cut away to a, a full face, I'll, I'll come to this one. I will rarely use it. And most of the time I keep it hidden so I can see what's going on in, in, underneath it. And 98% of that line will be deleted. But there'll be the odd opportunity to just cut to my face for comedic effect or to emphasize a point. And that's when I want to be able to cut to the full screen camera. But let's just hide that one for now. We then have the little overlay that you can see has now appeared um, and then we go down to the two layers below it so the next layer is going to be the face cam so we want to crop it to size and reduce to the right size so it fits perfectly in there and then the bottom layer is the game so now we've got it set up so it looks exactly the way you would normally expect it to look trim it to the start of that clip so it fits nicely and then highlight all of that 
and this is where you see the reason for having the three of these drag that back to just shortly after the music ends and then for each of the three that you're going to be able to see at the start because you're not going to see this top one because it's probably going to be deleted it's definitely still hidden so we want to start with the screen looking like this we'll then go and do a cross dissolve on each of those three layers which then gives the effect of it fading from the intro into the game so it looks like this which I think is just a cool look. I'll then go through all this. I'm not going to be editing a lot out as I go through. I've, I've been through different phases of editing out ums and erms and things like that. And I think it actually makes the video seem a little bit less natural. So I tend to leave a lot of that in unless I really am flubbing a line or I'm coughing or something like that. But I'll watch it all through to make sure it all makes sense. If there's any, if there's any coughs or sniffs, they'll come out. If there's any extended periods where I'm not talking, they'll come out. But as you can see, that rarely happens. I can talk about Football Manager all day long. So there's not a lot that's going to have to come out. But what I'm really looking for is opportunities to maybe emphasize a point by using the full screen camera or doing a zoomed in close up or maybe slowing something down or adding a graphic effect over the top of something. So just really looking for opportunities to enhance what's already there. You could, or I mean, if if you talk the way I do, certainly, and you don't need to edit much out of the actual spoken content, you could just release it as it is. And there have been plenty of times over the year, over the years, where I've not even edited from here. I've just literally assembled the files, released them, knowing that there's not been a mistake in the video. But I try to take a little bit more care and attention on what I'm doing with them these days. Um, but I'm just going to go through now, go through that process, and show you what the finished file looks like. So I've made it through to the end of the video. As you can see, there was only one instance in the whole video where I actually wanted to go full screen. In fact, I need to turn that back on so you can see it. So um, it's just this one point where I just wanted to go full screen. Other than that, it's all on the uh, all on the little face cam in the corner. We then get through to the end of the video. We go back full screen again. And then the last thing I need to do to finish off, let's just make sure we have clipped this at the right point. We have, so we can just stick my little end credits thing on um, that thanks all of my Patreons and channel members. Um, and then we have some specific music that goes at the end of the Greek Odyssey episodes, which I know we have to knock down 20 decibels so it's not too loud. And that finishes the video, at which point we just hit file, export, export media and then we want it as a h264 because this is youtube's encoding settings we want it encoded as a youtube 1080p full hd video everything else on the preset stays the same and then i put them into a render queue rather than just rendering rendering them straight out of premiere pro which opens up adobe media encoder which means i can then queue up videos to render and usually what i'll do is i'll stack up as many videos as i've got um, that need rendering and then once this queue is full with everything I need to do that day, that's when I'll hit render, the little play button to start the render queue, and then I'll go and do something else because it keeps, it, it just takes my computer out of commission for anywhere up to like two or three hours, depending on how many videos I've got. It's one of the reasons why I've got a render PC that I'm going to be getting soon, but that hasn't arrived yet. Um, but that is on order and when that comes i'll show you how it changes the process for having that as well but for now that will just sit in that render queue while i do another one and then i'll probably edit this one and stick that in the queue as well and then i'll uh, go and take the dog for a walk or something and that is how i record and edit a football manager video if you want to see um the process for uploading and how i do the tags and the descriptions and the thumbnails and all that stuff let me know down in the comments i've not included it in this video because i think this one was already probably pretty long but if you've got any questions off the back of it let me know down in the comments or as ever come find me over on twitch four nights a week mondays wednesdays thursdays sundays 8 p.m uk time until i fall asleep twitch.tv slash lelujo and i'm always happy to to answer any questions you've got over there as well or over on social media but if you have enjoyed this video please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on it for it for me subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on so you don't miss out on any future content here on the channel and thank you very much for watching.